Welcome Hello. to 2020 in review. No, 2021, babe. Oh. <laughs> I'm a year off. Oh my god. That was close. That yeah. was close. 2020. One. One. <laughs> 2021. And we just got to thinking about like all the stuff we've been blessed enough to do this past year. So <laughs> get your seatbelt on because we're about to take you through a ride. 2020. One. One. <laughs> Reel it on back. Literally so epic. We booked an Airbnb and stayed with friends in a super swanky spot with an indoor fireplace, celebrated a really beautiful new year. So we like rung in 2021 with a bang. It was so good to be with friends. It was nice to be in a home, have long showers, and it was a taste of the luxury that we had been missing this whole time living in Red Pepper. So that was a good start to the year for sure. And I think even more importantly, it was a time for us to really bond with some of our closest friends in yeah. North Carolina. It was really, really, really special. But this was the year that we said goodbye to our 30 number and welcomed in 31. It was nice to age and I guess as we get older, <laughs> you start to have different um, perspective of life. And so my desire for that day was to go on a hike and go thrifting, I think we did, and just like, not do anything crazy. Let's go for a peaceful hike in the wilderness is more my pace of life. Just for reference, <laughs> it was nice to age was said by no one on earth <laughs> except for Juliana here on the Just I like aging. Channel. It makes you feel wiser. <laughs> Uh, Anyways, yeah, we also had a date, you remember? That was like probably one of the first dates we'd had in a hot minute. We went to the rock climbing gym and that was a lot of fun. It's funny, that's how we talk about it. We had a date. Yeah, I know. Well, dates are rare if you have a child in your life, you know? That's funny. We went for a big ski trip up in the mountains. That was amazing. Azalea was in the snow. We were building snowmen. We went to Grandfather Mountain. It was a chilly, chilly, chilly trip for sure. Obviously, all that was amazing, but COVID was totally still a thing. So we were pretty much homebodies, kind of to a degree, mostly staying in and around the North Carolina area. And so we were just being cozy at the house, working on the land and um, going for trips around the corner to the Honeysuckle Tea House and just kind of working on home stuff as well as a huge project in our swanky office that we were going to because we weren't really able to work at coffee shops so this office space was a place for us to go get work done while Azalea was at school we were um, digging in roots get out the house we were we needed a space to get away from the bus though because the bus was starting to feel so tiny he was going to school and like it was really helpful for her to grow in her comfortability with others yeah have um, a little community of friends that she could hang out with yeah, in the day yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, she loves going to school. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. So while we were in this office space doing all our work, we were coffee addicts at oh that time. God. It was intense, oh but we had a lot going on. It was, it was coffee. building up towards spring, which is a really busy season for Justin and his beekeeping business. And we had the cookbook launch, which was crazy. We had worked all year for that. If you're ever thinking about writing a book, I just never, I never knew. It was gonna be so intense and so much work. Yeah. It was so much fun. We had moments where we broke down. We had moments where we were excited and felt accomplished. It was so many different emotions tied into one. When you have a deadline coming, yeah, it's like the last out. minute, yeah, the last minute build up towards the end and but all then, the things that we were working on for that entire year were coming to sort of like an end and a close and everything that we were going to put out into the world, it's like nerve wracking, you know, because you don't know what the response is going to be. You don't know if you just like wasted all this time or like, yeah, it's a lot, a lot on your mind. But we finished it off with overwhelming totally support from a lot of you guys who actually got the book and and were kind enough to reach out to us and tell us how much you appreciated it. Yeah. So it really just kind of like ended that project with such a big bang and made us feel like all that time and energy that we put into it was For sure, it was totally worth 100%. it. Yeah, we had some epic sales thanks to you guys. And just for that little time period, we probably sold over 800 cookbooks for the entire year. It's been amazing to see the cookbook sales continue on and we've planted like over a thousand trees. Just like with Buda Bee Apiary, just seeing a business do good for our planet. I don't Get know, that was, that was just a really a, a time that I felt a lot of pride because Me of that. Too. And then also with Buda Bee, 
that was an extremely emotional, it was just a huge roll, emotional roller so coaster. Much. I was like, do I keep the business going? Do I close it? How are we going to travel? Because it's a location based business. But we ended up hiring on two new employees full time, and they are the most absolutely stellar characters. I can't speak highly enough of them. And I've been so blessed to be able to work with them since April, even before April of this year. And we've been able to continue focusing on our mission and becoming a better business that can provide more value to our hosts and just more value to the community and environment as a whole. That was a huge accomplishment for me. Yeah. And it makes me, like when I lay my head down at night, I can feel confident that I am doing good in the world. Yeah. That we as a team are doing good in the world. That I'm extremely grateful for. Yeah, and I'm grateful for you guys, Jackson and Alfredo, for like hopping on board and being such an awesome team to work together with Justin. And like, it's just really cool to see him step into this new role and have people working together like on a huge project that's good for the environment and also allows us to travel and live this lifestyle. So people doing what they love to do and having the jobs that they've only ever dreamed of and then us being able to just adventure and still keep up with the business is just a win-win for everybody and we love that that's even possible. This man has very adventurous bucket lists in mind and uh, one of the things that he had always wanted to do was take our rock climbing skills to the great outdoors and we totally did that this year. We ventured into North Carolina mountains and took friends out for rock climbing trips and that just got gets the me, gear gets me all we fuzzy needed. Inside, right? Yeah, like it. we rock climbed outside so of many Moab. places. Yeah. That was unbelievable. That's like a pinnacle place to be able to rock climb. Yeah, we got Azalea the gear she needs to be Azalea able to rock climb. Azalea rock climb. Azalea rock climb. She she's, she's two scared years old. but enjoys it. Yeah, she started rock climbing. I'm so That's proud crazy. of that. She's, she did so. She was a boss. Yeah, man. and it's just really cool to see all of us taking our dreams and putting them into reality and actually making moves on the things that we want to do in life instead of just like sitting around and talking about them. We do the research to know where the right walls are to climb and we go there and we do it because that's the only way that you can make your dreams a reality is by actually acting on those initial thoughts. So that was also the first trip that we took with the bus that year. We wanted to tow the Jeep for the first time and that was a whole adventure in itself up into the mountains and we had passengers riding with us. It was a good trip for sure. This whole time we had been in North Carolina staying on the little community farm that we were living on. It's the place where Azalea was brought home when she was a tiny tiny newborn baby. It's a place that we had somehow found ourselves rooted for the last like three years of our life. We finished building the bus out there. We've done a lot on this farm and we helped to raise chickens and ducks, ducks and we helped grow seed, plant flowers and produce and we had our own little garden and land and community that we would come together and have fires with. We had a space to host and bring people together for friendsgivings and all kinds of gathering, family shenanigans. So that farm, yeah, that farm has like a really warm place in my heart and I'm grateful that we were able to live there and experience that type of lifestyle. But it does come with its woes. Tell them about the swamp thing. Oh, well, if you guys saw in our previous <laughs> videos. Yeah, I mean, it was tough. It was, it, it had its tough moments. Um, whenever it was in the winter, it would flood, it would be like, you know, a mud pit out there. Um, so yeah, there were some downsides to living in the swamp. It was, it took a big toll on our mentality. Not to mention the, you know, winter in a bus. It's cold, man. It wasn't ideal. It was gloomy. Slightly dismal. We made it work. We, made it through, you know? <laughs> we survived. We, did. we uh, needed many escapes from that place, and so we tried out living in tiny houses down in South Carolina, and that was a fun trip. We went to reconnect with friends, and a part of something that was important to us for this year, and the whole purpose of traveling full time, was to reconnect with friends that live all over. Meanwhile, yeah, we had dudes gatherings. That was something that was really important. I knew what was coming, and we were going to be taking the bus on the West Coast, so I knew that. You know, my connection with my crew back at home was going to be limited, and so we plugged in a lot of dudes' trip, but the pinnacle was probably the trip to Richmond, Virginia, yeah. and we got lit, and it was a blast. We saw music, we got food, we went to the gym, we played disc golf, and developed some really great bonds and relationships before we hitched it up and headed to the West Coast, and so for that, I'm forever eternally grateful.
So this is a super side note and not a pinnacle in our lives, but say there who's currently at school. She had been talking about a marble run for a long, long time and for her, a marble run was a pinnacle moment. We were stuck at home a lot and so having a really fun, engaging like game for her to play and also us together. And if you are a parent and have never used a marble run, it's actually loads of fun. So this was also the year that we officially ported ways with the form and cut ties with North Carolina. We were ready to really just venture and be full-time kind of out in the world traveling and adventuring and so we bid our friends farewell. We had many of farewell parties towards the end of our stay in North Carolina and the farewell parties just never they, stopped. Yeah they kept going everyone was like let's do it at our house now and then our house and then our house so we just like house hopped around for an entire week celebrating and enjoying life and being together and it was really a beautiful week well, for just sure. like hit on how monumental of a moment that was because for us we had been in the bus for three years and we had never really been fully nomadic um and this summer was the first time we were able to actually be nomadic with the bus like amazing. leave and not have to have a return not go back. yeah that was just a huge accomplishment it's something we've sure. been working for for three years yeah but there was also some things that were really important to us to finish doing on the bus that we had like been procrastinating on for several years. So we had some huge projects and upgrades and renovations and whatnot. We finished building a rooftop deck, which honestly has been a game changer for being out on the West Coast and being able to do yoga on the roof and enjoy the space. It was just really beautiful to be able to have that extra room. We also fixed up our bedroom. Azalea had just been growing so much and she needed a bigger space from my closet to a twin size bed. So it's nice you can actually fit like a full length person in there, which is cool. We upgraded the solar panels. We cleaned a lot all the time and consistently had daily maintenance chores that we were dealing with once we started traveling west in the bus we had to think about like where we're gonna dump and cleaning out the shifter and refilling the water tanks and all the things that come with bus life it was the beginning of the daily maintenance of bus life i got nothing to add to that <laughs> up and get a facelift. she got a whole body lift <laughs> yeah. oh man so much happened and that is literally just the first half of the year oh yeah Celia graduated her first year of preschool congrats hey Let's take a pause and let's say a big thank you to our sponsor for today's video. Yes. <laughs> They're a really great company that has a lot of sustainability practices when it comes to making phone cases. Not only do they have a huge selection of customizable phone cases in various materials, but they also reuse a lot of plastic waste and recreate it into phone cases. The new impact and ultra impact cases are made with up to 65% of recycled materials and also plant-based materials, which is super cool. If you have a kid or you're like me and you're always dropping your phone out your back pocket, don't worry because Case Device has done tests on their impact phone cases for over 9.8 feet. These guys have got a really solid option to help you protect your phone from cracking screens and smashing your phone to smithereens. The thing that's really cool about the phone cases is that they have a microbial coating on them which prevents any germs from sitting on your phone and kills about 99% of bacteria. If you guys are looking for a new sustainable option for your phone case and something that you know is going to protect your phone from any type of mishap that could come along your way, especially if you have a kiddo, then go check out caseify.com slash Justin and Juby to get 15% off your order. Trust me, you're for sure going to find a phone case that you're going to love. I was looking on their website for what felt like forever and found so many great options. So feel free to go check it out. And thanks again, Case Defy, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get on to the second half of the year. All right, welcome back. Second half of 2020. Started in Iceland. Thank you, Iceland. We love you. 
after Iceland we came back and we decided to head west finally and we ventured first through corn and soy. The heartland, the pulling up those roots and getting used to the routine of moving so frequently and just doing what yeah. is required of bus life. It was a rough couple of weeks. We, yeah, it was two weeks that we went from North Carolina to Colorado and that was way too fast. We were driving yeah. like three hour days, three days a week. We were juggling work and being parents and adventuring where we were traveling through. Um, it was a lot. We learned quickly that we needed to move much slower, but we had a purpose to get to Colorado in, by a certain time period. And it was to take a flight that we had booked from Denver to Bermuda. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> thank you. Bermuda. That was one of my favorite trips of it the year, epic. hands down. Uh -huh. I hadn't um, seen my family in like almost two years because of COVID. And so that was a great way to reconnect, see everybody come together, be by the beach, celebrate my brother's 18th, um, spend some, some quality family time, let Azalea hang out with the family and give us some time. We had more dates, deep soloing, rock climbing above the water. Yeah. Honestly, it was an amazing trip and it got us excited about beach life. And don't forget about the blow up unicorn. Oh my god, well. uni was hilarious. Uni. For me, the highlights of the Bermuda trip were was a, seeing Azalea being able to connect and develop a relationship, a deeper relationship with the family. Not to mention we just had a blast with the family. Um, with all the drama included, it was still a lot of fun. And then, you know, Juby and I, through this search of where we want to find and put roots, we made a really, really amazing discovery, which was between the mountains and the sea, which it was always a battle between the two. We love the sea winds, the sea. like the we ocean. We just feel healthier the by the humidity, ocean, the, the sun, salt water, the all of it. Water. I fell in love with the water mm -hmm. and snorkeling. Yeah. Ugh. We forgot to mention that something really important happened for you, babes, before we went to Bermuda, which was, which was really good timing because it's never fun to have long hair at the beach. Oh, I cut my dreadlocks. Yeah. That was like wow. eight years. Those are some gnarly dreadlocks. Yep. Ooh. We yeah. said goodbye to the mold. When we got back from Bermuda, we dove straight back into bus life with some intense shenanigans. We got kicked out of a campground. We had roaches invading the house. Oh my God, the Honestly, it was like super stressful, very overwhelming. We contemplated why we were even coming back into the bus, especially after having like long showers and a home and a, and a space to be. We started traveling more west. Um, we were breaking down a bunch. Um, the engine kept overheating. We had a lot of issues on the road. But we were also like taking into consideration what we learned. We were traveling slower. Mm -hmm. Not to mention when we found ourselves in these places that we had always wanted to see over on the west coast. These national parks, Moab, Arches, Zion. When we were there, it, we also had these moments where we were just like, we're, we're here. We're doing we made what we it. set out we to do like, like three years ago. This is truly amazing. Yeah. So, like, I also saw us go through the hard times, but also saw us go through this period where it's like, actually, you know, this is pretty amazing. It is amazing. In itself, you yeah. know? Despite the struggles that come along with it when you're a family, it was beautiful. Yeah. We howled at night with coyotes. Oh we saw so many beautiful full moons and the most epic rainbow I think I've ever seen in Double my life. Rainbow. Literally. I, the, it was just incredible. There was just so many times we were out in the middle of nowhere, complete silence, and there's people having fires, and you just sit outside and you're like, this is what life is about, like experiencing things and coming together, having fires, being in the middle of nowhere, seeing nature at its best, and just And instilling life. in Azalea appreciation for nature for and the sure. outdoors as well, you yeah. know, just to respect, you know, planet Earth and see her in her full, like, awe and beauty. Um, yeah, really, really great. and that's when we really discovered the benefits of BLM land. Traveling so much with the bus on the East Coast, we didn't really ever hawk at BLM land, but when we started to find those uh, key spots, honestly, great. it was a game changer, especially the ones where we could find the signal um, to be able to still get work done at the house if we needed to. It was really cool to find places that we could hawk for free for two weeks. Talk about saving the money. <laughs> 
we stayed in some really kind of wild places. That event we did, gutted, oh. we were in the desert for like five days. There was like sand blizzards, we had bloody boogers. We watched three teams like build out these rigs. We zoomed out of there real quick and broke a lot of stuff on the way out. Remember our whole just, shelf broke? Yes, yes, let me just clarify. It was a fun experience. <laughs> it was loads of it fun. It was a good trip. <laughs> it, was, um, it was rugged. It was rugged. very rugged. Uh, we were desert rats by the end of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and after that, we continued our ventures towards Utah. Justin had a deadline oh, to get yeah. back to North Carolina. So we actually spent some time aboard this year then and also when we came back, you came back from Bermuda early. So we yes. spent like a good few times separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we had yeah, to go yeah. back for beekeeping and checking in on the team and me and Isaiah did the whole like live alone thing in the bus and we experienced snow and cold weather and hardship but also like amazing mom and daughter moments and like some whole cool quality girl time. So I will always appreciate just like baking and face masks and hairdos and painting nails and make-believe and all the stuff that we did that was a lot of fun i can be a very independent person so i was in my element you know being able to like just go get done what needed to get done and then connect with friends have fun for me it was a blast yeah. and so definitely going to continue to do that more and i hope you do it too yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of people, people ask, have, yeah, about, like, ask you about taking personal time for yourself. To yeah, what's up and with that. what we do, I feel like you take your personal time in concentrated blocks of several days, but my personal time is like interspersed throughout life. Mm, the goodbye to Red Pepper was bittersweet. You know, we knew that we needed to make a change in our lifestyle, at least for a short period of time. And, and no, we did not sell red pepper. No, Many God, of you wondered no, where she is. No, 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 no. She's, She's just parked just up. outside of Vegas. Yeah, she yeah, goes yeah, into yeah, town yeah. for good times every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she it was it was bittersweet because we love we love her. The experiences we lived here for three years, the experiences we had with her were great. But we also knew what we needed for our mentality's sake. And we'll come back to her. It's not like a goodbye forever. It's sort of like we just don't want to live in her full time anymore. We want to see her as like an adventure mobile mm. and go to her for continuing to explore the western port of the US because we still need to go up the coast of California all the way up to Oregon and there's, there's just, just so much more to see. Left to see in the yeah. Red Pepper, so. Oh yeah, and I said goodbye to my plants. That's not exciting except for maybe, I mean That's it's not even sad. exciting, it's just sad. Yeah, <laughs> for me, but you probably don't care so much but it was difficult to port with some of the plants like I had some cuttings that were from when I worked at Azalea school that became plants and so they were several years old and I had finally got into a rhythm of taking care of my plants and I guess it's something that I maybe a little bit miss in this current life that we're living because we don't have plants here but so yeah I guess here we are we are currently in Mexico we moved here um, well, yeah yeah wait winter. wait wait I mean you can't just drop it like that like let's get a drum roll or something oh like, -na 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 -na. it's kind of so, a big deal okay. we moved to freaking Mexico so that we could have some respite for the winter experience a new country and see if we wanted to buy land a property and escape place to live to settle for the winter months to focus, do projects, explore, um, tune back into ourselves, all the things. Have and a space for family and friends to come and visit, but also like holiday with us. Yeah, and now we're doing that. You know, yeah. we have our own spot that we're renting as I was in school. Now um, we have a roommate, like, that's been is, cool. He's like essentially our brother. I he's know. like our roommate now. It's been great having his energy around. Mm -hmm. I ran a freaking 5K. Amazing, babe. You're crushing your bucket list. Check. Yeah. Um, you guys had a birthday. We'll you and both Azalea. Had birthdays Vince in is Mexico. gonna have a birthday. We're gonna Here go scuba month. diving. Yeah, skydiving. <laughs> um, snorkeling. We're learning a new language. Yeah, we're working on our Spanish. It feels good. It feels wholesome. We needed a really big change. I think we love huge change. Things that'll be like you're out of your comfort zone to begin with, but the longer you kind of meld into that lifestyle and that way of living you sort of become one with it and it becomes more comfortable and easier and more fun and feels right so has been happy like really really happy as well she has she loves going me, to school makes me she warm hasn't asked about inside. going home yeah no and you know we were concerned she would in the bus she would say i want to go home sometimes yeah. that was just a little concerning for us but yeah. we haven't seen that anymore and doing this 
was to be able to focus on some of our personal projects that we want to work on. So for you, the coloring book. For me, like just general, just getting the business organized. Yeah. Like what we do, what That's we work what on. That's what fuels these adventures. Yeah, but also what we work on, we're really, really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have the time and energy to focus and do that when we were doing the bus life because it requires so much attention and organization to where you're going, when you're going, where you're parking, so on and so, so forth. So much planning. So we've been able to focus and really get some things in tune and get some cool projects planned for next year. So the, for that, I'm really, really grateful as well. We had set out to be able to make a living and be able to travel full time and adventure. And YouTube has been a huge factor in all of this. You guys watching, enjoying our videos, hopefully, and everyone who's a Patreon, you guys have all helped to contribute to make Make this lifestyle possible so that we can continue creating content that hopefully inspires you to seize the day and follow your dreams and create projects for yourself that inspire you to be better people and like share your love and passion with others and you know it's just been it's been really amazing to finally see like the fruits of our labor kind of come to round this year out the fact that we're here in Mexico we're working in these beautiful locations and we're able to do everything off our laptops. We found ways to create physical products that you can do digitally. Like me working on this coloring book, it's just been really fun to be able to create something just on my laptop, wherever and anywhere we are and be able to sell it and share it with you guys. Um, yeah, I'm just really proud of us and all the hard work because I feel like so many of you ask like how we fund all of this and it's important to know that like throughout all of this we're not just like happy-go-lucky just filming our lives and that is a big part of it but there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into it planning out the videos thinking about what we're going to share with you guys and being real and honest and sharing the good times and the bad times and creating good valuable content that we can share with our email subscribers and our patrons and on instagram and just putting out like our truth I guess and not just you know the glam side of life because what we do might come across really glamorous but the reality is is that we do go through hard times and I think it's important that we share the hard work behind the scenes because you guys don't always see that so and what I would say is when our future selves are looking back at this video yeah. I would say keep it up you're doing great <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, no, exactly. Get like, it. like this past year, <laughs> keep doing what everything you're doing. that we've done has been a dream. There's been yeah. hard times, there's been great times, there's been everything in the middle. I would say keep it up, keep shooting for the stars, keep planning, keep adventuring, keep doing more. Um, goals. And we love all you guys, everyone who's here supporting us and giving us that positive feedback we always need to keep going. Sometimes we get really down and it's hard, and you guys pick us back up. So it's nice to have you all as a part of our community. Mm. And um, with that, I guess that's pretty much the year. I'm blown away by everything that we did this year. It just makes me so happy to know that this is our life. It's been a good year. I hope you enjoyed this magical montage of 2020. One? Yes. Okay. And um, we're excited to share some intentions and um, New Year's. Um, Resolutions. Resolutions. We'll call them intentions. Intentions, like intentions resolutions, better. affirmations, hopes and dreams and goals dreams. for the year. Dream it up, people. Yeah. And I'll say, I hope your 2021 20, was just as spectacular as ours, if not more. And we wish you guys the most beautiful New Year's celebration. Get lit. Get lit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Just yeah. enjoy yourself. Get lit the way you like to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we will see you in the new year. I guess. Peace.